Good day. To reintroduce myself, I'm Ayanda Matani, and this is part two of the presentation on direct and absorption costing method. So please make sure that you've watched part one as this is a continuation. We are going to continue with learning objective two, drafting of the income statement using both direct and absorption costing method. In part one, we assumed that the company values their inventory using the fine form method. Now, how would the income statement differ if the company were using the weighted average inventory method to value their inventory? Well, all the steps remain the same. In other words, the five-step approach under the direct method and the four-step approach under the absorption costing method would remain the same. The only exception is that the variable cost of sales under the direct method and the manufacturing cost of sales under the absorption method will be based on inventory values calculated using the weighted average method. If we use the weighted average method, a new average price is calculated every time new inventory is acquired. Again, the principles of the weighted average method are assumed knowledge for this podcast. The following slide demonstrates the difference between the direct costing and the absorption costing income statement. First, I'd like to bring to your attention the variable cost of sales and the cost of sales. You will notice that under the direct method, the variable cost of sales only considers variable costs while in the absorption costing method the cost of sales includes both the variable and fixed manufacturing costs also a contribution is calculated under the direct method as opposed to gross profit under the absorption costing method i'd also like to bring attention to the green line the green line demonstrates the different treatment of the fixed manufacturing cost. Under the direct method, the fixed manufacturing cost is treated as a period cost, and the absorption method allocates fixed manufacturing costs to products, making it a product cost. Finally, I'd like to bring your attention to this line under the absorption costing. You'll notice that it's, there's an overall under recovery of fixed cost. What is it and how is it calculated? The following slides will explain that. The under or over recovery of fixed manufacturing cost. As mentioned earlier, it applies only to the absorption costing method. The basic premise of this principle is to compare the actual fixed manufacturing cost to the absorbed fixed manufacturing cost. Since a predetermined absorption rate is, that is used to allocate the fixed manufacturing cost to units is based on the budgeted figures, an over or under absorption occurs. What is an over absorption or over recovery? An over recovery is when the allocated or absorbed cost is more than the fixed manufacturing cost that were actually incurred. An over recovery is reflected as an income in the income statement. To illustrate, let's assume that the predetermined absorption rate is 60 rand per unit based on the budgeted fixed manufacturing cost of 60,000 rand and a budgeted production of 1,000 units. Also, assume that the actual units produced for the period is 1,500 units and that the actual fixed manufacturing cost is 75,000 rand. How much would we allocate? We would allocate 90,000, taking the actual units produced multiplied by the predetermined absorption rate of 60,000 rand. So a 90, 60 rand per unit. So a 90,000 rand will be allocated and not 75,000 rand. You will therefore agree with me that there is an over recovery of 15,000 rand and thus will be reflected as income in the income statement. The opposite is true. An under recovery of fixed manufacturing costs is when all the allocated or absorbed costs are less than what was actually incurred and thus will be recognized as an expense in the income statement. 
Learning Objective 3 Reconciliation of Profits Between Direct and Absorption Cost and Methods Thus far, we have already noted that the main difference between the two costing methods is in the way that inventory is valued. Direct costing recognizes all fixed manufacturing costs as a period cost, while in absorption costing, some of the fixed manufacturing costs lies in the closing inventory, causing a difference in the net profit under the two methods. It therefore follows that the difference in the net profits between the direct and absorption method is attributable to the amount of fixed manufacturing cost deferred to the balance sheet as part of the closing inventory. Therefore, the reconciling items between the two net profits are the difference in the opening inventory values between the two costing methods and the difference in the closing inventory values between the two costing methods. I trust that after listening to this podcast, you have a better understanding of the direct as well as absorption costing method.